In this video, I wanna show you how you can get a wider view with double the resolution without spending any money on a new lens or a new camera. But first, let me grab this quick shot. I used to use this technique a lot when I first started photography because my first lens was a 55 millimeter prime and it was my only lens and oftentimes it just wasn't wide enough. So I used this technique a lot when I first started and it really helped me out. And today I think I might need it because I scouted this uh, waterfall a couple days ago and the scene I want to capture is really, really wide and my 17 millimeter lens is not cutting it. All right, so here's the scene I'm working with. We have this big waterfall that goes all the way down here and then all the way to the top, we have some snow covered mountains. And I wanna get the whole thing in frame. And that's gonna be difficult with just a 17 millimeter lens. So the technique is pretty simple. It's like doing a pano, but taking a picture on the top and taking a picture on the bottom landscape orientation that's it so let me just get my camera set up and i'll show you exactly how i'm going to do this it's going to be a bit difficult because this thing this uh, rail is in the way and we've got these branches everywhere so i'm going to try to do something about it but should be should be interesting so stick around so i tried doing handheld shots and the best possible uh angle is with the camera on the other side of this here so Let's try it out. Put all my gear just over the edge. Okay. So I'm going to hold my camera because or if I let go, it's just going to fall down. So this is going to be a bit of a complicated shot because I have to wipe off the lens and I forgot my, my lens cloth. I'm using my glove. I'm starting off with the waterfall. I'm gonna take two different exposures. I'm gonna take one that's correctly exposed. So I'm at F11, focusing in the distance, wiping off the lens, taking the shot. And then I'm gonna bump up my uh, F-stop to let's say F22 to expose for the waterfall. So I'm at one fourth of a second. I think that's gonna be good enough. That's good, let's wipe off the lens while I'm doing that. Okay. So let's look at the playback. Make sure the water is uh, correctly exposed. Everything's sharp. Good. Now the difficult part. Now we're gonna tilt up the lens, the camera. And uh, make sure to use your grid line while you're doing this. Um, find a point of reference, a tree, and use those vertical lines as a point of reference while, as you're tilting up. So I'm going to start tilting up. Trying to use a point of reference, and I'm using that line till I get the mountains and the bit of the sky right about there. I'm going to take two shots here too. I'm going to take one that's correctly exposed. Wiping off the lens. Taking the shot. Take the shot. Wipe off the lens. And then I'm going to bracket as well. So I'm going to increase my shutter speed for this, this exposure. Till I get, till I see some detail in the sky. Shutter, wipe off the lens. Wipe off the lens, shutter. And that should be it. So I got two images for the top, one for the sky and one that's correctly exposed and two images for the waterfall, one that's correctly exposed and one for the waterfall. So you can obviously experiment with your shutter speed for the waterfall and um, yeah, hopefully this looks good. So 
something I forgot to mention was to look out for the wind and moving branches. So when I shot these images at first, I shot them at one fourth of a second and that was a bit too slow. All the trees and the branches were blurry. So I re shot those exposures at one tenth of a second and everything was nice and sharp and I actually liked the texture of the water. So I took one exposure for the bottom and then two exposures for the top. Now the top, I'm going to have to do an exposure blend for the sky. So now what we want to do is uh, move these images to Photoshop and you want to move them separately. So the bottom image, you want it separate from the top. So all you want to do is right click, edit, open in Adobe Photoshop for the bottom image. And for the top, since there's two of them, you want to right click, edit, and open as layer in Photoshop. And I'll explain why we have to do that later. So once Photoshop opens up, you'll have two different tabs, one for the bottom exposure here and one for the top. Now we're not going to merge these images together right away because we have to do an exposure blend for the top image here. And I don't want to do a whole deep dive into exposure blending. So I'm going to do a really simple technique here. All you have to do is select both of these layers, go and edit, auto align, make sure auto is selected and press OK. And I'll just make sure both of those layers are perfectly aligned for when you do the exposure blending. Now, all you want to do now is add a mask to the top layer. So my top layer is the sky. Go to add a layer mask, hold down alt, click. Oh, add a black layer mask. Now you want to reveal the sky, use a gradient, make sure the white is selected and just drop down the filter. And now you can see the sky and that's pretty much it. So now we did the exposure blend for the top image. Now we can merge the bottom and the top together. So first thing you want to do is save the changes you made. So just press save. So once that's saved, you want to go to file, automate and photo merge. Now there's a whole bunch of different layers here and you can just test out each of these different layers. I personally like reposition. It doesn't warp your image as much, but it doesn't always work. So try all of them and see which one works best. But I'm going to do reposition and I'll show you what the other layers look like and how to work with those other different layouts. So let's start with reposition first. And you want to add open files. And that's why we open them separately is you can have both of these files here so it's easy to just go back and forth and test all these layers out instead of going into Lightroom and doing edit merge into Photoshop panorama do this instead it'll just be a lot easier so reposition you have open your files here and you just press OK all right so the photo merge is done and as you can see it looks pretty good there's no distortion or warping going on and reposition is the layout I use for my final image. But there is one little problem. And it's this tree right here. As you can see, the bottom part of the tree is going out to the left. So that's not good. There's two things I could try to do. Maybe uh, try to warp this tree uh, and make it straight. Or I could just do a new folder merge with a different layout. What I did end up doing is a I did warp the image a bit. So I selected both of these layers, duplicate them, and I merged them together. So edit, transform, and then a warp. And then all I did is I used the four by four grid here, and I moved this little dot to the right until the tree trunk was straight and press okay. Now you can see that the tree trunk doesn't look out of place. Nothing down here, the foliage down here looks out of place looks a lot better and now I have a nice photo merge image that I could do a full edit and that's basically how I did it obviously I did crop the image just to get rid of the transparent box on each side of the, the image here but yeah that's how I did it now if I had to use a different layout I would have to do a lot more work to the image to get a similar result let me show you exactly what I mean 
So again, file, automate, folder merge, and now let's try perspective. You want to add the files, press OK. Now once the photo merge is done, you might have a little panic attack because the top exposure here is completely warped. It looks terrible, but that's okay. We could do something to fix that. First thing you want to do is select both of these layers and you want to merge the layers together. Next thing you want to do is go to filters and adaptive wide angle. So your image will load up into this tab here and now we could use two tools to make this image look better. The first tool is the constraint tool and the second one is the polygon constraint tool. Um, we're not gonna use a polygon constraint tool uh, for this video, but the constraint tool is a really powerful tool and there's two different modes to it. So let me explain to you both of these different modes. So first mode here, let's say you wanna make this, this tree straight. So you'll just click, drag, and just follow the tree. And you can see that the line has a, a bend to it. It kind of bends with the image. So you want to follow the tree and you just unclick. And now you can see that there's a line. And now the tree is straight, but the image isn't straight. And this is where the second mode comes in. The second mode is holding down shift. And basically what it will do is it will make the tree straight, but it will make it perfectly vertical as well. So it will basically strain out the image a lot more than just doing that first mode. So let's go this tree here, hold down shift, click, drag, and let go. And now you can see it looks a lot better with just that one line. So now all you have to do is keep doing lines just to give more information to Photoshop and it'll just train out your image. Now we can do some lines on the side of the image and on the top and the bottom, kind of like that. So as you can see here, there's different colors here for when you're using the constraint tool. When you're using it without pressing shift, the line will be blue. When you're holding down shift and you're doing a vertical line, the line will be pink. And when you're holding down shift and doing a horizontal line, it will be yellow. So it's just easy to see what lines are what. So, but that's basically it. You want to use the constraint tool, both modes. So if you want it perfectly vertical, you hold down the shift. If you just want to straighten out a line, but not make it perfectly vertical, then just make a straight line without holding shift and just keep doing a whole bunch of lines just to give Photoshop more information to make your image straighter. And like I said, making lines to the top of the image is on the side also helps as well. And now obviously you're gonna have to crop this image or maybe maybe warp the image or maybe clone stamp, but I would just crop this image. So that's basically it. That's how you get a super wide angle image without owning a super wide angle lens. So if you enjoyed the video or you found it helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Next week, I'll be going to a beautiful trail. This is my last day at this park and it was spectacular. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification and until next time, God bless.